Hello and welcome to my Core i5 4690K Hackintosh build. In this, we are going to have a Deep Cool Nep Twin and Ar Rosewell Arc 550, two Western Digital Blue hard drives, an 8K kit of Corsair memory, a ASUS DirectU2 660, a Gigabyte H97M D3H. Now we open up the box to the Deep Cool Neptwin and we see that the packaging is rather nice. It comes with a the accessory box right at the top, so you don't have to go digging for it and soft foam padding to keep all of the actual hardware in place and safely secured. Now for fans this has two 120 millimeter fans that are semi-transparent as they have blue LEDs and semi-reflective logo stickers at the fan hub. Now the heat fan stack is all aluminum and a very shiny nickel plated bottom. Very high polish. Now we set that to the side and pick up some of the accessories. I had already assembled this once whenever I did a Uh, test with a Pentium G3258 with this motherboard and the fans use retention clips to keep them in place whenever mounting them to the heat fence stack. Now, the memory is the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR3 1600 MHz. The low profile heat sinks on these make them a much better pair with certain air coolers, especially aftermarket air coolers. Now, the H97M D3H by Gigabyte is a Crossfire enabled motherboard. If I wasn't building a Hackintosh, this would be a great multi card GPU setup. It comes with two SATA cables, the rear IO shield, a user's manual, and a driver disk. And that is it. Not a whole lot else going on in there. Now, as I mentioned, I had used the Neptwin cooler earlier for testing out this motherboard with the Intel Pentium G3258. Unfortunately, you cannot use that to build a Hackintosh. You'll learn the hard way. Now, you do have to remove the stock Intel bracket to install this aftercooler. And the retention bracket that goes between the heat stacks on the deep cool heat sink just screws into the two brackets that you screw on to the motherboard itself. Now, whenever you go to install memory with this particular motherboard, you do have to use the gray channels if you are only using two sticks of RAM. If you're using four, then obviously you'll also use the black slots, but the gray ones are the slot one and two, the blacks are three and four. So to utilize the dual channel of the memory, install your two sticks into the gray ones. 
Now, digging into the box for the Intel Core i5-4690K, it's your standard retail box. We're not going to get a whole lot of anything in there outside of the processor, the heatsink and fan, and some documentation about the warranty and if you run into any issues, how you should go about with getting that taken care of. Now that I have the box inside the box out, I find that I cannot get the processor out without taking out the heatsink and fan. Minor annoyance, but they do want to make sure that it doesn't rattle around and flop all over the place, risking damaging the processor. Now, unlike older processor designs, the Intels do not have the pan pins on the actual processor, they have connection points. Now, the pins are actually on the motherboard and as we get the processor out of its package we see that it's nice and clean and it's not a return, it's not an open box and it is in fact a 4690K Core i5, which is always nice. Some people have had problems where they bought it and it, they wound up getting the wrong processor. Now, these little notches in the processor are going to have to line up with these little knobs in the actual socket on the motherboard. Normally, you would have two triangles that you match up whenever you go to put the processor into place. However, since I had to take the stock bracket off, I no longer have the a triangle to tell me. Now, I got the aftermarket heatsink and fan installed onto the processor. Unfortunately, it took two, hand, two hands to do that. Now I am hooking up the fans into the system fan header as well as the CPU fan header. The center one is going to run off of the CPU fan header and the first one pushing air in is going to go into the system fan header so that the center fan is able to pull and push more of the heat from the heatsink fan stack array out. Now, this motherboard does come with six SATA 3 ports. However, we're only going to be using two and we'll be plugging them into those right angled slots we saw. Now, we see that the fan on the heatsink just barely clears the top of the Corsair memory. And here is the Antec VSK 400 mid tower case. Standard power button, reset, to USB 2.0 and then your headphone microphone jack. It has a brushed aluminum looking plastic front and two metal sides. The left side panel has honeycombed ventilation. It is a top mount power supply case 
with a rear 120 fan with options for 140 millimeter as well as grommets for liquid cooling if that is your choice. However, this is a smaller case and I would not recommend it. However, with this being a value case, you can see how flimsy the side panels are. Inside you see the holes for mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX fittings, and a CPU knockout if you want to do an aftermarket install but don't want to have to remove your entire motherboard. And I am going to try to push in the rear I.O. shield while I'm standing here with one hand. Unfortunately, that did not work. And we have it installed now. As you can see that there is not very much room in here. So it's going to be somewhat of a tight fit. However, it can be done. The video card clearance is an issue if you want to use all of the available drive bays within this case. Now, whenever I failed with the Pentium version of this build, you kind of have to wiggle that 660 into place. So any card over 10 and a half inches is really not going to fit. You're actually going to want to get one of the mini ITX video cards that they have been coming out with for tighter builds such as this one. Now I have only a couple of the standoffs screwed in and now I have the rest of them screwed in as well as the motherboard after I figured out which holes I needed to put them into. Unfortunately this case does not come up with enough standoffs for all of the holes that you need but it comes with two standoffs for you to use that are made of plastic and they just screw in and whenever you set your motherboard down they just pop through a standoff hole and here I am trying to figure out which fan header I am going to route this fan to without causing any problems yep it's gonna have to be this one taking into consideration the video card its height and the location of the other fan header I kind of have to put it there. Now here the ARC 550 is a decent little power, semi-modular power supply. Unfortunately it does not come with a whole lot as far as instructions. It comes with four screws that are for mounting it into the case. as well as a main power cable. Set that away off to the side. And here are the accessory cables. Set those off to the side as I, never mind. This is your PCI Express video card power cable. It has two six plus two pin connectors. And it comes with a SATA power cable and a 4-pin Molex power cable for anybody using anything that requires the legacy 4-pin power connection. And a standard main power cable. On the power supply, we have the 4 plus 4 pin power connector for the motherboard as well as the 20 plus 4 pin for the main power connection into the motherboard. That is where you plug in your 
video card power and that is where you plug in your accessory power and it mounts right there there we can see that it's plugged in the 4 plus 4 is plugged in right there at the top just underneath the power supply so whenever you go to install a power supply into this case you want to make sure that you connect your aux your additional power into that slot first before installing your power supply.